I did a meetup with uh, recently. A few of the slides I'm going to present are presented then, but it, I think it tells a story of a citizen viewpoint. So I, I present this as a professor, as a grandfather, as a citizen of Edinburgh, as a citizen of the world, uh, and, and so on. So I'm not looking at this from any particular viewpoint. So thanks very much uh, for the introduction. I get introduced in many different ways uh, at, at events. Uh, recently, I was described as the godfather of cybersecurity, <laughs> which kind of worried me. You know, I won't do an, an, an Italian accent. That would be offensive. Uh, and uh, then I was decided, I was <laughs> introduced as a national treasure. I don't know what that, that means. <laughs> Maybe old and uh, not so good, but uh, my best introduction ever, and I was so proud of it, was to be introduced as a crypto professor. I got, yes, I've made it. I've come all the way from Falkirk to Edinburgh, and somebody has just introduced me as a crypto professor. Fantastic. That's what I want to be in life. I've made it. That's it. End of story. And so I believe that crypto will rebuild uh, the world. And I'd like to tell you a few little stories on the way and show you what we've been working in. I adore crypto. It's what I want to do. As Steve Jobs says, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. I love crypto. If you ask my wife, she'll say, why? Oh, you're sitting there solving another puzzle and things like that. But that is my hobby. I get to teach students about what I love. That's a unique opportunity to be a teacher. And then I get to work with amazing companies and do great things. And I, little bits of things, I think, through Civtex and Phonic are doing very well. That was one of our spin-outs. My goodness, we spent seven years all over the UK telling people that information sharing was the future. And everybody told us, oh, we're already doing that. We've got 10 times the budget. They knew we're going to do it, and you're just a little research group. Our company is now really changing the world. So we live in Bob and Alice world, like it or not, uh, Bob and Alice. Sometimes we've got to protect them. <laughs> so unfortunately, there's Eve. Other times, we are actually Eve, but that's another story. And the world we've created is around Trent. And what I'm going to say is that what we've built is a disaster, a complete and absolute disaster. If we were to start here, we certainly wouldn't start here. So we need to change the world. And we need to change it around trust, OK? So no presentation. I'm really shocked that GDPR, I might have missed it, hasn't been talked about. I've never been to a presentation in the last six months that GDPR was talked about at length. So I know you're completely, absolutely bored of it, but it's going to change your world. The carrot hasn't worked, and then the stick is coming along. This is the biggest stick ever, because it's 4% of your global turnover, and you might end up in jail. OK? It's kind of serious stuff. It could, it could put you in jail. That's when CEOs kind of wake up. Well, this will put me in jail if I don't buy that far. Well, go and buy it. That's great. And it's all about trust. And it's all about blockchain and making sure that things really do happen. And citizens are going to give their get their data back. And encryption is going to be a key part of it. Pseudo anonymity is going to be key. Does anybody know what pseudo anonymity means? Maybe tell us when you've got some time. To me, it's either anonymized or it isn't. My chi number isn't really anonymized because I know how it's made. So if I seen it, I could spot it. And then we're going to have to detect, respond, and investigate much, 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 much quicker. Six months of Equifax, no, oh. <laughs> 72 hours. So it's going to change, and it's a changing world. If you're interested, if anybody wants to buy my Christmas present, then that's an IBM Z series computer. That's all about crypto. Everything it does is in crypto space. OK, so let's look. So because I'm a professor, I like to do a little bit of academic study. So there'll be, a, there'll be a test after this that you'll have to do. And if you pass, then that's good. There is where we are. This is where we are. Who's Trent? Who's the god of the internet? Those companies. Are they? 
Surely not. Yes, those are the gods of the internet. What they say is true. But let's encrypt. And Komodo are coming along and say, let's do it for free. OK, I pay you $50. $50 to create a key pair? What? Surely not. $50 to create a crypto, a crypto pair? And you check my identity, which is my, that I've got a company that exists and so on. So the setup that we have is that these companies provide the core of the internet. What they say is are, are correct. They, they prove identity. I use my private key to sign, and I prove it with my public key. But does, does your mum know what PKI is and the little green thing that appears on HTTPS? No. Yes? Good. <laughs> Who said yes? Who said yes? Who said yes? Whose mum? Whose mum knows all about PKI? Get her signed up. <laughs> Somebody did say yes. Oh, it's maybe God that said yes to me then. It's also used in key exchange. So basically, we're stuffed. We're stuffed. If a, if a key, a key root certificate company gets hacked, we are stuffed. Google especially lose their private key, and we're stuffed. We wake up, and my phone goes into overdrive with no caller ID. I don't know if you get that. It always happens on a Friday evening. I get no caller ID, and I know it's the BBC, and I know the NHS or something like that. It's been hacked. If that happens, and it's the biggest risk on the internet, we're stuffed because you can't trust anything. Raytheon, I think, shut down their company for a couple of days to go hunt the Adobe signed thing and so on. So it's a kind of scary world. And then you get, uh, you get uh, people saying that, uh, OK, crypto's fine, but laws are better. You go, what did you just say? <laughs> you go, well, well, it's OK. So in Australia, so let's see if I can get rid of this bit there. It's unfortunate. But in Australia, it's reckoned that the laws of Australia override the laws of mathematics. And they say, yeah, uh, so the laws of mathematics are commendable. <laughs> they're, they're, they're quite good. They're quite good. But really, the only law that applies in Australia is the law of Australia, OK? So crypto is finished, OK? It's a kind of, kind of law thing. And then we get uh, Amber. And I really do, sorry, I feel sorry for politicians. I know when they talk about things, they probably don't know the in-depth. So I'm not criticizing politicians uh, at all here. So Amber says that real people don't care about end-to-end -end encryption. True, but real people care about not being hacked. Real people care about not being scammed. Real people care about their identity being stolen. Okay, so that's the only thing I say about, about that. And then, and then again, I'm sorry. <laughs> There is a big difference between hashing and hashtags. <laughs> it's, it's the first lecture that I do to my students. <laughs> Please don't go into companies and say, we're going to do MD5 to do some hashtags, because they'll, <laughs> they'll leave. You'll leave. OK, so it's, a, it's unfortunate. That was an unfortunate gaffe. I, I didn't show the, the, the TV show that she was on that uh, did that. Dab. And then she says she knows nothing about encryption, so, so good on her. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's uh, interesting. And so I have been down to the House of Commons, uh, and I, I did go down to the House of Commons, and I did explain Bob and Alice. The first person to ever go to the House of Commons and talk about Bob and Alice and public key encryption. <laughs> And what's interesting about this video, so I don't know if you've ever been uh, to the House of Commons, but it's not the nicest place sometimes. So my PIN number goes in about here. It's difficult to see it. Ah, sorry, it's at the introduction there. Uh, my PIN number goes in somewhere about here. OK, I don't know if you can see it. And it was on the internet in about half an hour. <laughs> it's my year of birth anyway, so <laughs> it's not a big secret. And what, what, if you look at the guy at the back there, see the guy behind me? I'll play it forward. Look, he doesn't move. He doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I bored him to to tears sleep. He's not the Monopoly guy, so he's not Equifax. The guy beside me is going crazy. Look, watch, watch, watch him. I'm, I'm trying to talk about serious things, and he's going back and forward, and he's spilling everybody's glasses and stuff. <laughs> he goes, hey, stop, stop. I'm trying to explain. Bob and Alice, he even gives me... Uh, so I did go down. Uh, the bill went ahead. The bill went ahead. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it, but it was quite a significant, uh, quite significant bill uh, from, from there. So PKI doesn't work, but when Google says jump, you jump. Okay. So this was the this was the email that I got sent uh, from uh, from from Google. I don't know if anybody else has got that that email, but basically it's saying that if you don't change to HTTPS, you will be marked as insecure. If you don't get ranked in Google, you're kind of stuffed. So. So I thought, who's the most trusted entity in the whole world that we need to make sure that we're connecting to? The police, of course. Greater Manchester Police does not have a certificate on there. <laughs> North Hans, Hertz, Derbyshire, Northumbria. Uh, well, I like this, but this one, I just love this bit. See the bit up the top there? You can do a Google search on the police page. Isn't that nice? <laughs> can you see at the top? Oh, no, you can't see it. Oh, you can. Yeah. I think that's really nice to provide a, a website for the police, for, for, for citizens, and to put a Google search. Remember when we used to write pages that uh, did that kind, kind of thing? Uh, South Yorkshire, uh, Cambridgeshire, uh, Police Scotland. Uh, and Wiltshire. And the thing I like about Wiltshire is that uh, actually this is a get safe online. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm arrested over the weekend, then please could somebody come and bail me out. <laughs> and the thing I like about, uh, about Wiltshire is that if you, want, if you have a concern, a crime to report, then you post it into an insecure page. Okay, uh, and, it, and it does work, okay? So, so really, things have got to change. So hopefully nobody's received one of these, have they? Anybody recognize that page? Uh, so that's a scam page that you get. I didn't do the one with the queen, the picture of the queen, and so on. But if you've been doing bad things, something like that will pop up and say, rather than being arrested, if you pay some bitcoins, uh, we'll let you off with it. That isn't a future police state. I'm glad to say in Scotland, that is a scam, okay? But I can't tell because all the pages that we saw just recently uh, had no signing. So I can't tell the difference between that page uh, and, uh, and a, a correct page. So we looked at it as we're building a machine, a new machine, and it's a brand new machine. So I told the story uh, about, about what happened to me. Uh, and I can't believe that we still do that. Uh, and I can't believe we, we still ask our parents to fill in six double-sided pages for their kids to tell us all well about their kids and send that off to school. That's a crazy world. I don't understand that at all. So the most important election of my life was the Scottish independence referendum. I needed to vote. So that's where I live. And that's an old picture. That's a Ford Sierra, if you want to know. Juniper Green has come a long way. It's not a Fortinera. It's a bus stop there. I don't think that exists anymore. Uh, so I went along and wanted to vote and say, I've got my paper, and I'm a person, and I'm a citizen of Edinburgh. And they go, sorry. <laughs> no, you don't live here. You live in Leith. I go, what? I don't live in Leith. I live here, Juniper Green. No, you don't. You live in Leith, OK? <laughs> That's your bar, that's your pub, the Dalmeny bar. I go, what's going on here? I want to vote, please let me vote. And then I realized that I made the mistake, it was a big mistake, that I called my son the same name as me. You know, it's a kind of Scottish tradition, William Johnston Buchanan, Bill, and so on. I made the fundamental state mistake of calling him the same name. I'll never do it again. <laughs> 
uh, I get called up with them a lot saying, Dad, your identity has come up on my login. Something's happened somewhere. There's a bit of a problem with the whole back end. So the problem was here is that he moved to Leith and he took my identity. <laughs> what? He's, he's, he's definitely younger than me. I think that's a fundamental thing there. I don't want to explain the biology there, but he's younger than me. And somebody somewhere, and they go, yeah, yeah, it's OK. Just hand it over. We'll get it sorted. Uh, what, this is an insecure line. I'm going to hand you to somebody here, and you're going to tell them to write on a piece of paper a, and a pencil. I pay tax. I've paid tax lots. And then I get things like this that says, dear occupier. I've got three of those. Dear occupier, who are you? <laughs> Have you got any kids? Have you got any immigrants or refugees in your house? <laughs> Who's in your house? Tell us. Where is it you live? <laughs> What's your age? We'll guess it if you want. I go, for goodness sake, you're very fast when it comes to me getting a parking ticket. They are unbelievable. <laughs> they are so fast in, in sending me a parking fine. And they can track me down to the inch if I don't pay it. But they say, dear occupier. And it kind of dawned on me that I spend time in here actually making my concerns known about the, about the area. And six months later, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, it was discussed. And I don't think anything really happened. For it. That really worries me that I'm not being allowed to be part of a community, of, of a world of something. That's an old world to me. So identity is, is, is really key uh, to, to our future. Sorry, that's uh, let's go past Amber again. Uh, and and it's, 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 a, it's a new world that we're living in. Just let me get to the point that I want to go to. So it's a new world and it's a different world. So I got, I got a little award, which is quite nice. And I got some letters of thanks. I got one from Nicola, which I was really keen about. That was really good. But she said, well done, Bill. And she signed it there. I got one from the Lord Chancellor of Edinburgh. I don't know. He's the representative of the Queen in Edinburgh. And then Bob Dylan sent me a, a congratulations. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, you and me, Bill, you know, we're, we're, we're rolling stones. <laughs> We're good to go. Well done. And uh, so he, he sent me an email. And then I got one from the Deputy General of the United Nations. <laughs> I always like when it starts, dear my dear. <laughs> okay, you're leaving the EU, but uh, you're our friends, okay? So he, he, and he does exist. And he said I was going to get 1.2 million which is rather derogatory, because I, I normally get them for about 12 and a half million from Nigeria. <coughs> and he, he does exist. He does exist, and I have called him, but he won't return my calls. <laughs> half the money would be fine, but uh, and then I get it in German, which I think is really great. Anybody read that? Dear, 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 dear male and female or something like that. Uh, very, very affectionate. So that's three million euros. So the German, that German letter was obviously uh, much better uh, then. And then I get asked for a power of attorney just recently. I go, what? Uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, just sign. And then get somebody to witness it. OK. And just photograph it and send it. You go, what? <laughs> How can anybody? say that that is me and that that witness, are you going to go and check that witness to make sure that that's their signature? And in 10 years' time, when the company is massive, you're going to come back to me and tell me that that's my signature and that nobody sent that, that thing. So now, when I get Amazon scanned, I sign like that. <laughs> and now I sign like that. <laughs> I've perfected it. So if somebody wants to sign for my Amazon packages, it's that, <laughs> not that. I'm left-handed, so I do it like that. OK, there's a bit at the, at the start that you might struggle to. 
And this is a crazy world. But what we want is citizen ID. We don't want a government ID. We don't want the government to take over our lives and for to have control. We want it to be ours and for us to control it uh, from, from there. So there's my ID. I want to be him. He does exist. If you've watched 24, that's Bill Buchanan. I still get emails from people over the internet saying, are you the real Bill Buchanan? <laughs> I am. He's false. <laughs> he died. <laughs> and I still exist. Yeah, he was a cool guy, but uh, he's not anymore. So that's my ID. They tried it in 2006, and we really mucked up big time. If you remember 2006, there was an ID, an ID card for the UK, and it was basically a big spying network. Why did we do it? Because of terrorism. You go, what? <laughs> What's the risk there? And actually, it was all about tracking the citizen. It was all about linking where they went and what they were doing and so on. So we've got to watch not to fall into this trap again. So if I say to governments, don't do this again, do it properly and do it right uh, for the, the citizen. So we need to be more citizen centric. So I was at a I was at a presentation uh, where Finland and uh, Estonia were, were highlighted. They have the same problems as us. 10% of the population using 80% of the social care, health and social care. Uh, they, they've built a whole infrastructure around a citizen, proper citizen-focused infrastructure. The citizen is at the centre of everything and they've built this whole infrastructure. But I thought the, the key thing on the slides was this. Okay, this to me is fundamental. Uh, they said that Finland was one of the most trusted countries in the world for their government. The people of Finland trust their government to do what's best. The UK and other nations are quite far behind about how much we trust our governments. And I think in Scotland, we actually have the opportunity to go for a trusted uh, infrastructure. So they're looking towards the future, which is much more about patient-focused uh, for the uh, individuals to be part of their, their health care infrastructure. So this is something that we've been working on. Basically, you tip the world upside down. So rather than us revolving around public sector, public services, and public uh, uh, individuals, then we become the centre and things will, will revolve uh, around us. Now, it was brought up earlier that the lack of information sharing is the core problem that we have on, on the internet. And really, what we need to do is to, is to design our systems much better around uh, putting the citizen right at the, at the centre. And a core part is for us to really look at defining... Uh, the bridge between digital trust and human trust. If we can't get that right, then really we will be struggling. So that means tech, that means human things. And the biggest barrier here is how we bring the two together to rebuild our services. Because this doesn't work without that, and that definitely won't happen without that. We've got to get doctors and nurses and public sector on board, and we need to put the citizen right at the core of everything that we do. So one of our spin-outs has actually been looking at this, and I think in London, they're well beyond many other cities in the world. They're building up an ecosystem that allows data to flow much better. And I don't quite see that in Scotland yet, because London has, has went ahead and brought together 7,000 diverse health and social care agencies and got them to sign up to information sharing. But a core part of this must be around trust and governance and consent. And ID and blockchain, trustworthy, are all the core part of this. And I believe that cities are the way forward. So this guy built Edinburgh. He, we had a wacky, wacky place on the high street that everybody lived, and it was horrible, 
and he says, let's create a new one. Let's go for a really amazing design. And they go, oh, that's, it's kind of square. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. But that built Edinburgh, and, and we're now proud of what he actually did. I hate to show this, but if you look in a bit more detail, he says, uh, the patron of the very polite and liberal North Britain, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, we would know as Scotland. <laughs> and really, smart cities are looking all about this, this fusion of, uh, of, of data and really taking the data from, from its inputs, feeding up to outputs, and then we get uh, outcomes uh, from, from, from that. And a core part of this must be building this core infrastructure around tr trust. And I think London is getting there. So what we should have is KPIs for our cities. I should say that this is my concern, and I want to know how well you're doing now, today, next week. I want to know how you've done over the last year. So London has went ahead, and they've actually built their open data infrastructure. And you can see in real time, every single day, how well London is doing in terms of being an international city, bringing employment, reducing obesity. That's their KPIs. Edinburgh, watch. <laughs> There's a tram coming towards you. It's OK. <laughs> it won't come out of the screen, OK? <laughs> I know a little bit about usability. Uh, I, I think a tram coming towards you when you go to a website. Uh, then there's lots of people. OK, there's lots of people here. And this is my favorite. We don't talk about that bridge anymore. We do have a new bridge, which is even better. Uh, there. So Edinburgh is just at the start. And I think we've got possibilities. Uh, but it needs to move a great deal. So if you want to find out where the best museums and uh, where are they, uh, the public conveniences are at Edinburgh, that's the place to look. If you look, the top format is PDF with 140. One thing I know about open data, PDF isn't the best format for that to happen. <laughs> so we've been working with uh, Spiritus and the, the NHS uh, on, uh, on uh, blockchain. And uh, you can see asset tracking is in one of the most disruptive areas and also has a highly probable chance of, uh, of succeeding. We've been looking around things like uh, uh, recalls for devices. Uh, infusion pumps, there's a call out just now from the FDA uh, about that for infusion pumps. And we, we call it, uh, well, this is a, a risk here. Uh, these, uh, these are pacemakers. Half a million devices had to be recalled because of, a, of a, a problem that could allow them to be hacked. So we, we imagine a world that a ransomware person could actually take control of all the pacemakers and then say, uh, please pay the ransom or we'll flick the switch and we'll make them all stop. That's a kind of scary world and it's a world that really shouldn't ex exist, we hope. So in blockchain, they're looking at tracking they're looking at pharma to make sure that there's a chain of custody for the logging. Looking at clinical trials, we could save 200 billion in savings just by defining a chain of custody uh, with inside our clinical trials. And then there's the whole uh, area of looking at uh, the patient pathway because we go through lots of different places in healthcare and we want to sustain the relationship with all the key stakeholders that we are involved with. And then we're going to die eventually. That's the end of that path there. That's the, I hate to say it, but you're all going to end up. See that, that one there? <laughs> Every single one of you. <laughs> you at the back, especially. <laughs> and you, you. So we're all going to end up there. But it's really important that we understand uh, I could give you some shock horror stories, but I won't because <laughs> we're getting filmed. Uh, but everybody has a, has a war story about somebody they know about in health or it didn't quite go right. The people involved in health are amazing. The processes and procedures are possibly not quite as amazing as they should be. So we've been looking at Health Block, and there's cases such as this, orthopedic implants. It's found that metal is leaking out into the limbs. And unfortunately, the surgeons didn't mark 
the, the implants that went with a certain patient. Now they've got to try and find the patients. I don't know how they're going to do that. Maybe if you go through something that detects metal, they go, boop, oh, there's one. <laughs> have a look at the serial number. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> so we want, to, we want to track that. We want to track infusion pumps, and there are lots of incidents. We don't know how much it costs and so on, and what, but what's the best manufacturer and so on. So the health block is what we're working on just now, and as we all know, that's the infrastructure for, for blockchain. Our architecture is going right back to the supplier. I know that this is done in retail, but we want to track a device right through to its decommissioning at the very end, and to know where it's been, and we can improve the patient pathway, we can understand how devices are used, what's used most, and whether it's good value for money, uh, and also when failures happen, we can know where all our devices are and hopefully recall them. So an initial thing is just to go for a very simple signing of a token onto the, the blockchain and keep it private, okay? So there's nothing smart there. It's basically if somebody wants to see our token, we can, we can be sure that it is on the blockchain and it's been signed in some way. But the future really is towards the device itself or the manufacturer signing its own data and adding its own uh, key onto the blockchain and then enacting a smart contract. In that way, we can make sure that different manufacturers can, can have different viewpoints onto the system. So the work that we're doing with Spiritus just now is really trying to create that whole ecosystem because the blockchain is only one part of it. The whole data infrastructure around the back end is where it becomes most uh, interesting. So the work we've been looking at with Spiritus is around cryptography. Uh, we love homomorphic encryption. And homomorphic encryption is I can take your encrypted values and I can do a summation uh, and then I still can't tell what the values you've given me. So in that way, my processing becomes secure because I only deal with encrypted values. So because we're in the city of Edinburgh, uh, of John Napier, the second best scientist to, res to reside here, I think, uh, discrete logarithms are our friends, and John Napier uh, created them. So there are really interesting work going on with Hawk. And Hawk allows a smart contract to exist off the blockchain, but still be trusted and secure. And that's an amazing concept that you can still link a smart contract onto the blockchain, but it can be trusted into the infrastructure. And we're using Zcash, or the concepts of Zcash, called ZK Snarks, to be able to hide the privacy. Because if you link an infusion pump, you could probably link that to a nurse or to a patient and so on. So we've been using Zcash. The problem with Zcash, as we'll see, is that the time it takes to actually create the zero knowledge proof is about 40 seconds. That's a long time to create the little puzzle that's required to create the zero knowledge proof. So that's a challenge for us just now, is to get that, uh, from, uh, get that processing uh, within good time limits. So the two areas that we're working on just now is hidden homomorphic, so we can actually get Alice to prove that she knows two values. So we tell her, prove that you can count to eight. Give us two values, uh, encrypted, and we'll check. So she creates an encrypted five, an encrypted three, gives it to us, and we check that that's eight as encrypted. So that's hidden homomorphic. The blind evaluation is our biggest challenge. The biggest weakness in security is in memory, in process because all the variables come back alive again. And we've, we've got HTTPS for security. <laughs> we've got uh, encryption on disk. Processing of the, of the values is the biggest problem. So that's where we've been looking at uh, as part of that. And there are now methods that allow us to actually create that. So if you come on one of our classes, we'll teach you all about the maths and things like that. So what we'd like to do is to be able to build a zero-knowledge uh, blockchain that could be open and could be seen possibly by other agencies and, and uh, by uh, individuals and to go for a complete zero-knowledge where everything is anonymized, not pseudo-anonymity. So, so what? So, so what is that this is what we'd like, and I think it was hinted on earlier, 
why do I have to fill in a form to get a, a free bus travel on, on Edinburgh buses? Why can't it just happen in the background and I walk on the bus and I don't care? So we would like much more signing of things onto the blockchain for the contracts to be agreed by the public sector and it all just happens. If someone has dementia, they shouldn't have to fill in a form with the family. A doctor signs it, says it's valid, and they get an attestation, a claim, and that gets met, fed into the claim system and it happens. What a wonderful world <laughs> that that could uh, happen. And I think it will. It will happen, but it's got to be the citizen who controls their own data. They're Robert Smith, Rab Smith, Bobby Smith. That's their identity, and it's up to them to gather their claims on their system. So I think that's the future uh, for us. So a new trust is required. The trust should be distributed. We need uh, a citizen ID, but it's not government controlled. And I think this is a good quote from uh, Steve, the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who will do it. And I think we've got the audience here to do that. Thank you.